Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I have the first in a series of videos which I am super excited for, which will be kind of education on different things regarding goth culture. Today I'm going to start off with telling you about a bunch of different subgroups in the goth community. I'm super excited, so let's get right into it. So what is goth? It is a music-based subculture created in the post-punk era of the 1980s, inspired by musical artists such as Susie and the Banshees, Bauhaus, please tell me I said that right, and The Cure. Since then, the subculture has spread across the globe into many different cultures and blended with different subgenres that each have their own unique flair. So starting off, we have trad goth. This type of goth was born with the start of the era in the 1980s, and as such, they listen to music such as Joy Division, Depeche Mode, Bauhaus, Susie and the Banshees, and New Order. Trad goths are typically what you think of when you think of a goth, the black teased up hair, all black outfits with studs and spikes and lots of chains everywhere, lots of jewelry, corsets, um, the dark angular makeup with typically pale foundation. They are the elder goths, the real trad goths are the elder goths of the subculture. These people were around for the start of the movement. They were going to clubs and parties and shows for different goth bands, local and international, and they are kind of the heart of the movement. Lots of respect to the elder traditional goths, but however today you can still dress trad goth, you can still be trad goth as long as you listen to trad goth music. As I said before, goth is a music-based subculture. Just dressing in all black and teasing up your hair doesn't make you goth. It's what you listen to, who you are, and all your morbid interests. Next, we have romantic goths. Romantic goths romanticize, as the name suggests, a lot of the darker, more morbid things in life, such as graveyards, dead flowers, and animal bones. Typically, they are very creative, writing poetry and music and art to express their passionate feelings. Uh, romance and sorrow in films, literature, and theater may interest them. They enjoy softer music such as Dark Sanctuary, Nightwish, Cocktoo Twins, uh, The Smiths, and Dead Can Dance. Typically, they're wearing softer, more flowy, lacy garments in all black as well as other deep colors such as blue, green, purple, and most commonly, red. You could consider what I have today a romantic goth look with the red and the crimson lips, and I'm wearing some soft lace and it's all flowy. Um, it's just kind of a softer variant of the trad goth style while listening to kind of the same music still. Cyber goth. You may recognize cyber goths from this viral video. <laughs> cyber goths thrive in the upbeat and fast-paced environments of raves, clubs, dances, and festivals. They love techno and industrial music, such as Ramstein, Asphyxia, Angel Spit, Goteki. Um, they kind of break the stereotype of wearing just black and being depressed. They wear black with neon colors like pink, orange, green, yellow, uh, the neon dreads I'm sure you've seen, uh, the goggles, and the gas masks and all this jewelry and these cool platform boots. They love to dance and they thrive in that environment being around a lot of people listening to that hardcore industrial and techno music. They really have a bright spin on the typical goth style. They also have very interesting makeup that ranges from simple looks with a black with a neon flare to very complex designs. It's super cool to look at all the different makeup styles. Next, we have Victorian goth, inspired by the large dresses and elegance of the Victorian era, as well as literature such as Edgar Allan Poe. Often, they will try to be as historically accurate as possible, which is super cool. I've seen a lot of Victorian goths that really strive for being historically accurate. I feel like a lot of them are history buffs, correct me if I'm wrong. So, they enjoy 
writing poetry, drinking tea, throwing sophisticated parties, and acting as if they are aristocrats in the Victorian era, but with a darker twist. They enjoy classical music. Typical attire would be a dark suit and top hat for guys, and then a large flowing ball gown, all black, with some darker colors such as purple and red, lots of jewelry, corsets, and typically softer makeup. Some like to try and recreate makeup historically accurate from the Victorian times, and some just keep it classical goth. Up next, we have hippie goth. So as you can assume, this is a combination of hippie and goth culture. Often, these type of goths enjoy being eco-friendly, taking care of the environment, maybe even protesting um, climate change and things like that. Some may lean towards being vegan or vegetarian or restricting their diets in a way that it's not harming the environment. So they are just like a typical hippie but with a dark twist, maybe enjoying things such as taxidermy. A lot of hippie goths are interested in the occult, witchcraft, and earth religions such as paganism or wicca. Not all, but a lot of them do find an interest in that. Um, popular genres that hippie goths will listen to are pagan rock, Celtic rock, and folk music. So just like hippies, they will have the long skirts and dresses, flowy shirts, pants, and different garments, wide-brimmed hats, and round large sunglasses, a lot of them just with a darker twist, maybe some dark crystal jewelry, some chains. It's really interesting to see the intersection of those two little cultures. Um, I really love hippie goth. It's a super interesting style. Next, we have Gothabilly. Uh, this is a twist, kind of, of the 1950s style of the rockabilly or the psychobilly. Um, music that they listen to is goth rock mixed with country and blues. They have a very retro rock and roll feel with a morbid side enjoying horror movies and things like that. A lot of them have Betty Bangs. Um, I will put a picture there. That is what they look like. Um, they wear pencil skirts and dresses in black and many other colors. Again, super cool, kind of goth with a 1950s twist. Some smaller types of goth that are, don't really fit into their own category are vampire goth, basically romantic goth with a fascination for vampires. Super interesting, mostly leaning towards a crimson and black sort of style. Maybe they have fangs. I know there's a big business for actually custom fangs, which is super duper cool. And then there is fairy goth, which is basically hippie goth, but with a fascination with fairies. So maybe wearing lighter colors, sometimes even wings. You'd get them at like a renaissance festival and stuff like that. Very dainty and beautiful and soft, but still goth and dark at the same time. Then there's corp goth or corporate goth. So when you grow up from a baby bat into a hard-working goth, you often become corp goth or corporate goth that is intersecting the business casual or business style of like dress suits and vests and such with a more gothic twist. So basically all black, pinstripe, uh, maybe some jewelry, and it's very interesting to see the intersection there. It looks very professional, but still very goth. It's super cool. Then there is medieval goth, which is essentially the same thing as Victorian goth, just with the medieval era. Super interesting. A lot of them enjoy Renaissance festivals, medieval music, and things like that. Again, they try to be historically accurate as possible as well, which is super interesting. Props to them. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. I hope it could be educational for you. If I missed any types that you'd like a follow-up video on, please let me know in the comments below. I am super excited to continue this little mini-series with you, and I hope you have a good day. Love you. Bye!